Tonight we're taking a look at the St. Louis Blues salary cap situation and whether or not Vladimir Tarasenko is likely going to be moved and how much of an impact that's actually having on the Robert Thomas contract for the outstanding RFA looking for a new deal. I do want to talk a little bit more about Jack Eichel in the return package going to Buffalo regardless of uh, who it may be. I know there's still a lot of talk that obviously he would prefer and love to be a Boston Bruin. Uh, we also have some information from the Sharks writer Kevin Kurz on Thomas Hurdle uh, and we also have some other news concerning some potential signings, including Tyler Bozak. We'll discuss all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a variety of things to talk about here today. As you can see, I'm not in my normal location. I am on the road uh, at a hotel today. So uh, certainly uh, that's why things look a little bit different. We'll be back to our normal uh, set up probably uh, tomorrow. But into today's news, we do have a quick signing. Edmonton Oilers today announced they've signed uh, forward Cooper Marodi to a one-year two-way contract that pays him $750,000 at the NHL level, and he will get $150,000 at the American Hockey League level. So another uh, depth signing there for the Oilers organization. And we also learned as well that longtime NHL player uh, and former captain of the Minnesota Wild, Miko Koivu, appears to be making a return to likely work with the organization. It uh, looks as though he's going to be around uh, their development camp and uh, is exploring some opportunities to, to work with them. I'm not sure exactly what his role is going to be, uh, but the fact that he's even involved uh, with the game and with the team is a plus for them. He's got a ton of experience, a uh, great leader, and certainly can I'm sure can be a valuable piece in some capacity. So we'll have to see how things pan out with the Wild and Koivu. I also want to talk about the St. Louis Blues and how things are being impacted here between Tarasenko and Thomas and will Bozak return? Will he head elsewhere? And I honestly think after doing a little bit more research here that the Tyler Bozak UFA situation and the Robert Thomas RFA situation likely could be held up and impacted here by the fact that Tarasenko has not been moved yet. The Blues are very tight on salary cap space and obviously moving out a massive contract like Tarasenko would certainly give them a lot of much needed flexibility here. Robert Thomas is a lone RFA left to be signed. Apparently he is looking for a deal comparable to fellow teammate and a guy who just signed not long ago in a similar situation, Jordan Cairo. But apparently he's looking for about the same or a little bit better of Cairo's $2.8 million. So uh, given the very limited cap space right now in St. Louis, it's hard for them to get that deal done. They could certainly, if you look at their cap friendly, it shows them having, uh, you know, down to, I think it's around a million and a half dollars available. Uh, but it also shows, I think, like eight defensemen on the roster. They could demote a couple of those guys, free up about another 1.4, 1.5 there. So they realistically could probably maneuver themselves to having about $3 million available. But still, if it's going to take that much to sign Thomas, then they're certainly not going to be able to bring back Bozak. Uh, except it was reported earlier in the offseason that there was a deal on the table for for Bozak around 1.5 million on a one-year deal but that was not accepted um, and I know it's been reported that Bozak has some options and is believed right now that those options are likely with other teams so I know we'll have to see where things go on that front but uh, for Thomas looking for that kind of money that's certainly proven to be a little bit problematic and explains why he's not signed here as of yet, uh, I still think there's a better chance that Tarasenko could still be dealt. I know I'll be listening to uh, head coach Craig Berube and different people with the new organization uh, reference the Tarasenko situation. Recently, they make it sound like there's a good chance he could go into camp and still be a part of the team. And I still would say that is possible. However, I would think as we get closer to training camp here that later into September, that they, certainly things will pick up and there's going to be a more of a likelihood that he could be dealt. But at the same time, a lot of the teams that were showing interest are now teams that you can pretty much guarantee a rule out um, or at least what you would think it seems like Carolina the Islanders like they've made a lot of other subsequent moves which kind of take them under the picture so getting a Tarasenko deal done might be less likely or at least a lot more difficult and challenging like it was already pretty challenging before and, and this is going to be that much more harder now with those teams not really uh, having as much options as they did. But I think it's fair to say that the Blues were looking to make that deal, hopefully free up enough camp space to sign Kairou, maybe bring back Bozak, and now that's kind of all... You know, held up. Um, but from the Bozak situation, I would think that uh, based on what reports are indicating that there very well could be options for him to go to either Pittsburgh or Montreal, I would think that those both cities both make a lot of sense given their uh, need at center. Uh, Pittsburgh's going to have to start the year without 
Crosby and Malkin. That's going to create a bit of a hole. They do have Brian Boyle coming on a PTO, which will help if he plays well and looks good. They want to sign him. Maybe that's the option they go with there. Um, but still, it makes sense to bring in Bozak too. He's not going to likely go though, unless he gets an actual contract. Um, somewhere is around one and a half or so million dollars on a one-year deal is probably what it's going to take. And of course, the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, you know, certainly found themselves depleted at center. They have obviously picked up Christian Dvorak recently, which will certainly help. Uh, they obviously have Nick Suzuki, um, but obviously they're kind of a little bit weaker in the bottom six and adding a veteran guy like Bozak, who they could squeeze into their cap situation on a one-year deal. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. They had another veteran guy there's good on face-offs, can kill, kill some penalties for you. It, it certainly wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So uh, we'll see if either of those teams pan out for Bozak, but at this point, like I said, unless we happen to see a Tarasenko trade to happen quickly, I'm going to think that there's pretty good chance he doesn't return to St. Louis, but that's just my personal opinion. Uh, we also talked about Ilya Mikheyev requesting a trade yesterday. There was been a full limited or lack of uh, comments at all coming from his agency and Dan Milstein and Gold Star. But at this point, it's believed, like I said, that the, the, the trade request was denied and that he's expected to return to Toronto. They want to talk to him about how they see him getting an increased role this year, given the other exits that have happened within the organization. And we don't expect that to go anywhere, but obviously not getting uh, uh, you know much for comment out of the agency. It's not really overly surprising, but uh, we'll see where things materialize from there as we get closer to training camp. Uh, also, we heard an article from Kevin Kurz in The Athletic talking about the Sharks and talking about Tomas Hurdle and what the trade price could be. Now, I've seen some headlines out there saying the price has uh, been revealed for a trade. And I'll caution you, it really hasn't been. Uh, that's just Kevin Kurz's opinion. And he's probably pretty close, given the fact that he knows the team well. He knows what the players' values are. Like, you know, I'm, I'm sure like a lot of us, pretty educated. Like I said, with him knowing the team better than a lot of guys, you know, I can understand why he's he's probably close, but it certainly is not coming from an NHL insider who claims to have like you know more legit, uh, you know, inside information saying this is the price. It's just what his opinion is, but it's believed to be a first round pick and likely a prospect with it for Hurdle uh, if they do go down that road. But right now, GM Doug Wilson is telling other teams that are making inquiries because teams have inquired with the the recent interview he that he did talking about he didn't know if the Sharks wanted him back and all that, that uh, he's basically saying that he wants to wait for him to arrive for camp, talk to him, and uh, maybe even work out a contract extension. But at the same time, you have to think from Doug Wilson's perspective that it could be a negotiation ploy, and if he really makes teams feel that, you know, he's you know, going to be valued and going to be one to be kept in San Jose that might push up his price a little bit. You know, GMs do that all the time, right? So you, I've said it numerous times. You can't say what they say publicly or what they reveal to other GMs as, uh, you know, a uh, fact because they're not going to be completely revealing their, their cards here and wanting other teams to know what their plans are. So obviously... It's a situation where I do think there's a, a chance Hurdle gets dealt. I don't expect San Jose to be good this year, so I don't expect them to make the playoffs. I don't also I don't expect San Jose to rush into this. So I would suspect that when we get closer to NHL trade deadline, that Tomas Hurdle very well could be one of the bigger names on the market. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and I also want to talk about one of his teammates, uh, Timo Meyer. Now, Timo Meyer is a guy we've talked about before, mentioned in trade rumors, and I don't have any fresh rumors or anything on that. I just want to talk a little bit quickly on why I feel he's not going to be traded and it's his contract and I just want to dig a little bit deeper into the breakdown and structure of his contract if you take a look at it his cap hit is like six million dollars but next year which is the final year of the deal he is due 10 million dollars for salary which is the final year of his RFA deal he's still an RFA for the last time on the end of that contract which means he's going to be due a qualifying offer of 10 million bucks. Like, there's no way a team is going to take that on. I mean, that is absolutely insane. I mean, if you look at Jack Eichel, who's on the market for that same kind of salary, you know, he's a way higher level than Meyer. Meyer's been, you know, at one point viewed upon as being a really good player, like a good, you know, top six scoring winger, but he's been inconsistent, really falling off a cliff the last couple of years. A lot of that could be about the team around him, but still, like, nobody's going to take that on with that kind of contract, with the kind of production that you've been seeing out of him. So as much as he has been mentioned, uh, and I've seen his name popping up in and out of the rumor mill, like I said, really all summer with the Sharks really looking to possibly shake things up after another possible you know, down season we could see from them this year, 
I said, after just looking at the, the structure of that contract, like, there's just no way. So I just want to put that out there. Like, I just, I highly doubt this player is going to be traded only because of that. And the, really, another bad contract with the Sharks. I mean, they have the Vlasic contract, which I'm sure they regret. The Burns contract, which they probably regret. The Carlson contract, which I'm sure they deeply regret. And now they have Meyer, who, you know, still, even at the time, there's no way you can tell me putting that final year back-end deal backloaded at $10 million bucks was a wise idea. I know they couldn't predict that we're going to have a pandemic and a flat cap, but still, that's a little insane to me. And because of that, that contract's not going to be touchable. And if he keeps trending downwards, I wonder if they won't qualify. I mean, he could even be a UFA much sooner and uh, be at a San Jose in a whole different capacity. So we'll have to see where things go on the Meyer front. But I don't see him leaving the Sharks anytime soon because of that. And lastly, I just want to touch quickly also on Jack Eichel. Lots of talk about him. I know like, if you look around the league, there's all kinds of teams that have been in and out of the rumor mill. Like you get your usual suspects like the Rangers, the Ducks. Uh, you know, there was early on the, the Kings were involved, but we know they're out. The Wild are another team to watch. The Flames, who appear to be out now. And of course, even the Bruins. I think if Eichel could have his way, he would be a Bruin. He's from that area. Uh, you know, probably the childhood team he, he grew up cheering for. And I'm sure that, you know, really realistically too with David Krejci leaving like there's a hole at the center position future's uncertain for Patrice Bergeron like you just never know right I mean I'm not saying that we have new information to suggest the brooms are going all in or anything but I, th I think it's fair to say that um, that that would be his preferred method and if they take too long which uh, they will lose leverage against other teams but I've seen some people say in the comments and they probably could be right with this that at this point a deal might not happen before the season starts eventually hopefully he gets worked out with his surgery uh, spends a chunk of the year on um, on injured reserve maybe he gets traded closer to the deadline I feel like he could have a higher value at that point and finish the season strong with another team and here's the other thing too with the Sabres in their cap space uh, obviously uh, he's making $10 million. Right now, they're below the salary floor, but they have to sign Rasmus Dahlin. So they get the Dahlin contract done. You know that's not going to come cheap. Uh, let's say he's up around, I don't know, seven, eight million bucks. I'm not really sure what Dahlin's going to get, but you know, like I said, it's not going to be small for sure. It should be less than Eichel, but substantial. Um, so once you factor that in, they'll be above the floor. So they're not going to need to put Eichel a long term injury reserve. They can leave him as a roster player on regular IR all year if he does not get traded. But when he does, assuming that happens either before or during the season, then they are going to fall back below the floor. So I know the talk around has been for him to be getting a return of all future assets. They don't really want to take money on. But to be honest and fair here, they're not really going to have a choice or they won't be cap compliant. You take that $10 million out, they're going to be below the floor enough here. So like, for example, if a deal was worked out with the Bruins, guys like Jake DeBrusque who has been on the trade market feels like forever now too likely could be involved but if the Bruins were going to swing a deal with Buffalo to me you're likely looking at DeBrusque you're likely going to have to include Brandon Carlo you might have to throw in a guy like Stanika um, in, in some other picks or something like it's going to be a hefty price tag based on what the asking price is now so I'm, I'm not really sure they go there but after losing Krejci if they do feel later into the year if this drags on long enough that they're at risk to lose Bergeron then I can understand why they might go down this road and it'd be more likely he could end up where he wants. But that, that's just my speculation. That's not, like I said, there's no uh, reports, rumors, or anything suggesting that, you know, the Bruins are making a big run here for Eichel. I'm just saying that, you know, he, they've been linked to him. We know that that's his childhood preference, probably, or his preferred place to play. That's probably what the price tag is going to be. And, uh, you know, later in the year, if this drags on long enough, I can see why they might get more involved because they'll have a better idea of the long-term outlook with this team. So let me know what your thoughts are. Could he eventually end up there? Will we see an Eichel trade delayed? Could it be more of a trade deadline acquisition? Will they be able to work it out to get his surgery, spend a year there, and then become a real hot big commodity at the deadline? Teams might be willing to overpay more then than they will now once they know he's had a surgery, he's healthy, and uh, they have the rest of his contract that they can look forward to at a much more, you know, less risky situation. So let me know what your thoughts are on that down below. We'll discuss further. If you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and stick around. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest news, rumors, and analysis on all 32 NHL teams. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.